Hello, this video will talk about sequencing basics in Logic Pro 9. The first thing I'd like to discuss is the transport bar, which is located at the bottom of the screen. So here you have a whole host of information about your project, mainly to do with time and timing. So here we can see at what uh, minute or second uh, or millisecond uh, we are in your project which is just here and also we can see which bar we're at just here so say for, say for instance if I wanted to quickly jump to bar 9 uh, delete what's in the space uh, type 9 hit enter and that would take me to the beginning of bar 9 on my timeline um, you'll see here that what what, what is selected is a, a loop uh, length or a left locator and right locator and and these uh, are useful for when perhaps you're bouncing down your project so if you wanted to bounce a particular section so let's say I want to bounce from bar 3 to 15 you'll see that the left and right locators have changed position if I want to activate this um, this will now um, activate and, and, and if I play this region it will act as a loop and it will keep on playing this section but I need to have this turned on as well if I wanted to bounce uh, whatever was between the left and the right locators. You also have your tempo which can be adjusted by double clicking and typing in three values or two values often. Um, you also have the project end location. So say for example you can see here that the project ends at 15. Um, let's just type 16 so that you can see that. So basically when uh, your project plays um, it will stop at this point and go no further. Here you have your time signature which is expressed as a numerator and denominator. Below you have your division. Now this is particularly useful if you're dealing with different note values and different time signatures. So if we had triplets in 4-4 four, four, then we could change our division to 12 and by opening a region you can see that each crotchet beat, so one two, three, and four has been subdivided into threes. Now if we increase that to 16, it will move to 16th notes or semi-quavers. Equally if we moved it to eight quavers and you can go through each of the other subdivisions, sextuplets, demi-semi-quavers, etc. Now the um, other important parts of the transport bar are your input and output. So depending on whether you have a particular note being played by a particular part or a chord, that will be displayed just here. and It will tell you exactly which note or which chord is being played. And not only the pitch, but the a particular octave that that pitch falls within. Another important aspect of the transport bar is your CPU usage. So it, it, it basically the computer is telling you, um, or the transport bar is telling you how your computer is performing. So if you're using lots of effects and processes, you're likely to see your CPU uh, usage rise considerably. Moving on, uh, we then have the arrange window, which when you open a project, it looks like this. It shows you everything that you have in your project um, and enables you to select different regions to view them, etc. Um, by clicking the plus icon, that will create new tracks. And you can create new tracks with duplicate settings by selecting whichever track you want to copy and pressing this button, and it will copy that for you. Also, under Global Tracks, you have a, a list of um, items that you can change. So your markers are useful for marking out particular sections of your project. So, for example, if I wanted to mark out this section here, I'd activate my loop tool, left-click and hold, drag down till the uh, hand changes icon, drop, and that would create a marker. I can then right-click on that, rename it. You also have signature, which is your time signature, and also key. So you can change the key that the piece is in. Uh, this happens to be in D minor, so I'm going to change that to D minor and click OK. You can also change the time signature by double clicking 
uh, typing in your numerator and denominator valuing, values uh, and, and clicking enter. In this case, uh, the time signature is 4-4. You can also change your tempo. So it's by default set uh, down here on the transport bar, but perhaps you might want the tempo to change at another point. And you simply double click at the point that you wish the tempo to change, left click and hold and drag up and down uh, to change the tempo. Uh, in addition to that, what you can also do is you can change uh, how that uh, tempo changes, so whether you want it to be a sudden change or a gradual curved, um, perhaps an accelerando or a rallentando uh, for either speeding up or slowing down. In addition to these three default global tracks, you can right click on the grey space of global tracks and you can load up video if there's a video that you're composing to, chords, transposition and also beat mapping. You can configure your global tracks and tick those that you want to view also there. The next thing I'm going to uh, talk about is um, very briefly is your left click tool which is here and your command click tool which is here. These are useful if you want to very quickly flick between uh, certain tools. So at the moment I have both the pointer and the scissor tool selected. If I hold the command key and then uh, left click it, very, uh, it asks me if I want to cut a particular region. So you can choose which tools you have uh, by default to save you having to go backwards and forwards uh, through your left click tool. Region resizing in the arrange view is as simple as going to the bottom left hand or right hand corner of a particular region and dragging left and right. If you go to the top right hand corner you can create loops and each new loop is uh, shown or indicated with a straight line through. When we talk about looping sections we sometimes also refer to looping a section to listen to which can be done using your left and right indicators and it should be confused with looping a section or a region of MIDI data or audio. Now for each region you can open the list view which has been open all of this time and you can click on the event tab and this will show you all of the events within a particular region. The most common event that you're likely to see are notes, but you can also see others uh, which are other types of MIDI information which may include pitch bend and modulation. You can very also, uh, also very quickly edit the velocity of notes with this value here. So if we select our note we find it in our list view you can left click and hold, drag that up and down, you'll see that the colour changes for that particular note. Under the events tab um, for some slightly more complex editing of MIDI data or perhaps um, general uh, mass editing of it we can select functions and transform and here a whole host of options um, that allow you to edit data in the way that you'd like to. So for a fixed velocity, so something playing at exactly the same force, we would select this which brings up a menu with the data selected. You click operate but if you wanted to select everything in the region and operate, select and operate and that would then apply a velocity value in this case of 100 out of 127 to each of those MIDI notes. Now in addition to this function and form of transformation, humanize will be a particularly useful uh, type of trans uh, transformation. So you can see here that there are very subtle differences in the velocity of this guitar part. However, if I was to select one that perhaps hadn't been edited, you can see that a vast majority of the actual notes all have the same velocity value. What we're going to do then is we're going to click in the piano roll view and hold command and press A, that will select all of the notes within that region. We then go to functions, transform, 
and humanize. You can then select by how much the position, velocity and length of notes are randomized, in this case uh, not by that much, to give you some indication of the um, amount by which uh, something is, uh, is randomized. A semiquaver would be uh, a 1 in, uh, in, in this column here, so if we drag this up to 1 and then drag this to 0, that would represent randomizing the position by up to a semiquaver. Um, and that can be either uh, moving forwards in time or going backwards in time, so that's something to consider. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to cancel that, we're going to go back to it and just move it by the original value, which was 10, it's back to 0. So all the data is selected, so we're going to select operate and you can see it's made very subtle changes to the note velocity, uh, the position and the length. And the length info for each note is provided on the right hand side of the event tab. Now within the piano roll you have the option of left clicking with your pointer tool holding to change the rhythmic or timing uh, position of each note and also its pitch. You can also change its length by hovering over the right hand side of the note and dragging backwards and forwards. Another useful uh, tool to be aware of is that if you have played a part in using a MIDI keyboard and it sounds a little bit out of time or too, rather too out of time and it needs to sound perhaps robotic is that you can make use of the quantize tool which is just here. So let's say for example I select these notes here where they are very very slightly in some cases just out of time. I can select the rhythmic division that I want to quantize and in this case we're working with triplets so 1 over 12. If you were working in a time signature that didn't have tri triplets as part of the rhythms you'd probably opt for something like uh, 1 over 8 for quaver note rhythms and 1 over 16 for 16th note rhythms. So in this case I've got my 1 over 12 and by selecting that that has then moved the data. If you have uh, another region that you haven't selected, you could then go forwards, you could select that data, and you could press the Q button either here or you can press the Q button on your keyboard. So, next, um, I would like to very quickly show you HyperDraw which is a very important part of um, providing a little bit more realize, uh, sorry, a, a realistic performance to parts. So this button in the, in the bottom left hand corner of the piano roll just beneath the keyboard, if you left click on it this will open the hyper draw view and click on the drop down arrow and it will show you a whole host of um, MIDI controllers that you can edit information for. So in this case we have modulation which has been loaded for us first. Now modulation is often used and by default set to apply vibrato to pitch. So uh, in this case we have a guitar that has vibrato applied at the end of the uh, melodic phrase. which is heard as a slight wobbling up and down of pitch. In addition to that, we also have some use of pitch bend. And the way that pitch bend differs from modulation is that at zero, so at the very bottom, modulation uh, does not occur, whereas at full, it's at its most impactful. Uh, with pitch bend, the middle line, or zero in this case, is no pitch bend. Going below that will pitch bend down, going above will pitch bend up. The amount by which uh, a, a pitch is bent will, will be determined usually by the software synth. So in this case the EX S24, one of the most common. You would need to find your pitch bend section on your software synth 
and you can select by how many semitones you want that to go up with the up arrow and then by how many semitones you want that to go down so linked simply means that it will do exactly the same going down as it does going up but you can select different values if you wanted to have different pitch bends up and down So let's just very quickly listen to some pitch bend in action. So that's uh, pitch bend. Now, in addition to that, you may have other parts that may require other MIDI controllers. So, for example, a, a piano may require use of a sustain pedal. So the, the difference then between uh, modulation and um, the, the, sorry the difference between modulation and pitch bend with a sustain pedal is that they are either a continuous or non-continuous uh, controller. So with pitch bend and modulation they are what's known as continuous controllers and uh, sustain pedal is non-continuous because there is simply an on or off value for these controllers. Okay, so either foot pedal is off, represented by zero, or foot pedal is on by 127. When you've uh, finished editing uh, your MIDI um, information, uh, you can then you can then return by clicking on the HyperTraw view. Uh, the other part of MIDI that you can edit in HyperTraw are or is your note velocity, um, which is also available in your event view list view, but it is also available in HyperTraw depending on how you want to work. So it's just that it's it's represented in a slightly different way. Finally then, I'd like to move on to the mixer view in Logic and to just describe a few uh, key features. So on each track uh, you have your mute button, your solo button, um, which uh, mute stopping the sound so it doesn't play solo would mean it by itself playing uh, without any other instruments heard. You also have your fader, which you can move up and down by left clicking and holding you can also type in values so remembering of course that 0 dB is the highest value and all of these are negatives so if we wanted to change this to minus 7 we type minus 7 and it would move down accordingly and similarly minus 20 and it would move down to minus 20. You also have your panning control so your panning rotary by left clicking and dragging to the uh, to or down that moves the, the, the sound in the stereo field to the left hand side by dragging up that moves it to the right hand side and there's a maximum of uh, either 63 or 64 either side depending on whether you're panning left and right no panning um, can be typed in as zero and similarly you can type in values to get very specific panning measurements in addition to your panning you have uh, an output which is here, so you can select where that sound goes, and you also have your input, so what it is that's actually making the sound, so in this case the XS24. You have your send, which can be used for sending signal to buses, which, uh, for example, is useful when you're creating uh, groups uh, of uh, sounds for things like stereo reverb. And then above this you have your um, inserts. So you can see that the the, the plugins that are blue are, are those that are they're active. And if we wanted to turn them on and off, you simply hold the Alt key on the keyboard and left click, and it turns them on or off. To remove a plugin, you left click and hold on that plugin, and select no plugin. To apply a plugin, you left click and hold, and then you run through the menus to find the plugins that suit what it is you're trying to do to your signal. Some of the most common will probably be use of delay. If you're starting with delay, I'd, I'd recommend using the tape delay. 
when you're a little bit more confident, move on to de Delay Designer. Dynamics, you will certainly be making use of the compressor for controlling and limiting the dynamic range of signals. You may use DSs to control sibilance in sounds, particularly vocals. You may use a limiter in very rare cases to effectively apply a heavier form of compression to audio to make sure that it does not go above a specific level. And a noise gate can be useful for cutting out unwanted sounds. So for example, with a kick drum or a snare drum or a vocal, the parts in between where you don't want that sound to be heard or anything, the mic, uh, anything that the mic has recorded to be heard, you can use that. You set your threshold and anything that is quieter than that threshold level will not uh, be uh, will not be heard uh, on that track. You have your EQ which you can select uh, default and the best to use in most cases is your channel EQ which can also be opened up by double clicking on the visual representation of your EQ. Um, when your EQ is, is on um, the bypass button will be off. If it's, if, if it's not working then the bypass will be clicked down. You can see there by turning it on and off that it's not working. If there's no EQ applied you just simply double click on EQ and it will open up a new EQ plugin for you. Uh, finally then uh, some other important uh, plugins. Chorus flanger and phaser these can help to add depth to sound so um, some good examples would be if you had a, a backing vocal that needed to sound more like backing vocalists you could apply a chorus effect to thicken the sound um, you could apply a flanger which um, is in effect the same as a chorus except the signal of a chorus um, is sent back to the input um, again, and that's how a flanger differs from a chorus, very briefly. Uh, a phaser is where the, uh, the audio signal um, can be split uh, into two parts um, and it is sent in and out of phase, either negative or positive, which can help to create a sort of a whooshing effect. Um, a good example of a flanger would be um, Are You Going To Go My Way by Lenny Kravitz. Uh, if you listen to the guitar solo in that, you'll hear a flanger. Finally then, uh, reverb is particularly useful. Averb, perhaps the most simplest form of a synthetic reverb. Um, in addition to that type of synthetic reverb, you have onverb, goldverb, platinum verb and silver verb, which are all synthetic using algorithms to create reverb mathematically. The only differing uh, type of reverb is Space Designer, which is a convolution reverb, uh, essentially sampled reverb. So the way that this works is that, um, for example, a recording engineer has gone into a space with a microphone recording software, uh, a balloon and a pin. Uh, the mic is set up, you hit record and you pop the balloon in that space and the resultant sound is recorded uh, and then dragged into a viewable space. So you can actually drag audio waveforms into this uh, square space here um, to create your own uh, reverbs. Sampled uh, reverb and space design is perhaps going to give you the most realistic sounding reverb and the most natural sounding because it has been done in uh, authentic uh, places rather than relying on mathematical algorithms to calculate space and depth, for example. Um, so there you have how to uh, turn on certain plugins. Uh, the only other thing to uh, to mention would be your use of uh, all tracks once mixed. So let's say, for example, uh, have a look at all of these tracks together. So by selecting everything together, you can then very quickly move all faders up and down to desired levels. Now at the moment you'll see uh, that there's an orange number that indicates the maximum level that a, um, a sound has reached in terms of its decibel level. So if we listen to this from the beginning uh, and watch
what we'll notice is that each track has its own maximum decibel level indicated and that the output, uh, the master output, has clipped. We want to try and avoid this in any work that you do because uh, clip, clipping at zero um, dBFS, uh, so that's decibels full scale, uh, would lead to distortion and that will be audible when listened to through speakers, headphones, uh, in any circumstance. So what we need to do here is to bring the volume of all parts down so that we don't get clipping. So I'm going to bring this down a decibel and play again. Now we can see here that that is as close to 0 dB as it possibly could be, so we're at minus 0 0.4 and that is um, in this case perfect because um, you want your core circuit to be as loud as possible without clipping. Um, whilst also keeping your output uh, level at 0 as well as your master uh, level at 0. Now the difference between these is that your output volume is the, the volume at which uh, Quite, quite literally, the uh, the project is sent out at for um, for bouncing down, for example. So for when you submit your coursework, the master volume is also controlled down in the bottom right hand corner, and this is just simply a listening volume. So in effect, what you could do is you could be listening to your work with your output at zero volume, making sure that you're, it's as close to zero dB as possible but have your master volume down so that perhaps you're not listening to it at too loud a volume and damaging your ears. So that should conclude uh, most of the uh, basics of, of sequencing in Logic 9. Uh, thank you very much for watching.